Hello everyone, I am Rajiv Bongirwar, Chief Executive Officer of Hemraj Consulting. We are global leaders in designing functional safety upfront in components and vehicles for the automotive and aerospace industry. I am an author, speaker, participate in the working group of Safety Critical Systems Club UK and Technical Committee on the Standard UL4600 for evaluation of safety of autonomous vehicles and other products. And I have been also recognized as an industry leader by US-based biographer Marquis Huzu since 2017. I will now hand over to my colleague Gregor so that he can introduce himself. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gregor Ilnitsky and I am an expert in preventive quality assurance and master black belt Six Sigma. What does it make me? Well, I'm able to reach the goal of to implement the rule first shot bull's eye. In part one, I will explain how we can avoid malfunction due to software and electronics using STPA plus and integrating it with a process to assure safety and security. Part two will be covered by my colleague Gregor, who will explain how to use Sigma FMEA for a ECU hardware how we can calculate failure in time and how can we quantify the quality of your FMEA. First, I will quantify the magnitude of vehicle recall problem and then explain why I had to modify an existing STPA technique and lastly, how to apply STPA plus in real world applications. The significant increase in content of electronics and software in a vehicle from a mere 10% in 1980 to 35% in 2020 and estimated to be 50% by 2035 according to Deloitte. The picture on the right shows the transition and evolution from analog computers to digital computers exponentially rising with Moore's law. So from 1980, there has been an explosive growth of embedded devices in our day-to-day -day life. And the analysis techniques haven't significantly changed since then. Software and electronic malfunction is creating a havoc. It results in loss of reputation of companies, penalties and fines, and billions of dollars lost in warranty claims, depleting profits. Let's look at the statistics in 2019. Over 1.3 million people are dying in road accidents. 15 million vehicles were recalled and more than three vehicles were recalled for every new one manufactured. We have to identify ways of minimizing hazards before the first vehicle drive. Let us understand the properties of a system that make it unsafe or unreliable. When we start with designing a new system without performing any analysis, the system is neither safe nor reliable. We now apply existing techniques such as FMEA, FTA and inventory analysis which address the unreliability aspects of the system. We now additionally apply the STPA technique in use since 2005 which identifies the unintended interaction between components that leads to hazards. When we now apply STPA plus it helps in ensuring the safety as well as reliability of the system based on the information known at the time of design. Let's take a quick look at what benefits you could get from using this technique. First and foremost, it helps you in maximizing the number of hazards identified upfront. It also provides early feedback to other work products from a fresh eyes perspective. It also refines the input work products used in performing this analysis. Last but not least, it concurrently supports the analysis of safety of the intended functionality as well as cybersecurity along with safety. 
and don't forget you could perform this analysis in days or weeks which potentially could have taken weeks or months by other existing techniques so this is stpa as defined by nancy levison and professor john thomas of mit the four steps comprise identifying the system boundary and defining the purpose of analysis second step is defining the control structure which comprises a controller and a controlled element in step 3 you identify the unsafe control actions and in step 4 you identify the scenarios when unintended control actions could occur one of the improvements in scpa plus is to simplify the terminology we use the word unintended control action instead of unsafe because we are not only able to address safety but we can also identify security threats and problems that could lead to safety of the intended functionality let us now apply stpa plus to a real world example thanks to volvo trucks this video succinctly explains adaptive driving beam feature high beam that provide far better nighttime driving conditions When the camera detects other vehicles, the adaptive high beam switches off the LED segments that would otherwise dazzle drivers of vehicles ahead and approaching. The high beam still lights up the unaffected parts of the road. So applying the STPA technique in step 1, having defined the purpose of loss and the system boundary, one of the task is to identify system level hazards. As you can see the picture the driver of a vehicle could be glared so either the driver of the oncoming vehicle could be glared or the driver of the vehicle ahead if the headlamp high beam is not switched on the driver of ego vehicle will not have a good visibility of the road ahead in step 2 we define the control structure starting with the driver the vehicle and the road and environment in which the vehicle is driving we then building the building blocks of the system aligned with the system architecture notice the abstraction of the instrument cluster and body control module which has two different control units into a single electronic control unit the right level of abstraction is important to optimize the identification of control structures we then start with the arrows going from top to bottom which are in blue which are the control actions so the driver can control the vehicle by applying the brake or steering the vehicle or accelerating it similarly the power supply is provided by the instrument cluster to the headlamp control unit and the headlamps via the ignition switch the pink arrows shows the feedback provided by the lower level control elements to the controllers so the headlamp unit is communicating the objects detected to the headlamp control unit and also informing the instrument cluster these translate to the responsibilities of the controllers and the feedback is used by the controller to align with the element model that characterizes the behavior of the controlled elements in step 4 of the analysis we identify the loss scenarios these again align with the hazards and in the unintended control actions identified earlier for example the oncoming vehicle may not be detected on the other hand further there could be a delay in the communication between ecu and hcu which would result in the headlamp control unit switching on the higher beam for a longer time than required and lastly it is quite easy to understand that if the headlamp high beam is faulty it will not switch on but what this analysis techniques helps you to understand is it is quite possible that the headlamp control unit assumes that the high beam is already switched on along with the low beam but because of the configuration of the different sectors and the commands none of the sectors actually get switched on 
Now let us take a bit deeper look into preventive quality assurance. Let us talk about the new concept of FMAA analysis, especially for ECU hardware. Why a new way? What was the background? FMAA itself is in the meantime 70 years old. At the beginning, it was created to analyze mechanic systems and following the philosophy, reliable components make a reliable system. This mechanical point of view was transferred into the electronic world of hardware and software. And it is not really matching with expectations, I'm afraid. As you can imagine, the Six Sigma FMAA is a combination of classic FMAA and Six Sigma methodology. It supports analysis of all ECU life phases totally. It starts with a dream of a system, requirements analysis, and ends with recycling. First aspect of analysis is the design for functionality, means voice of customer. Electronic has to fulfill the expected functionality first. After it, the design of manufacturing aspects, voice of business, are to be validated. Sigma FMA analysis process cons uh, will be done under two aspects. Aspect one is the ECU design for functionality analysis with the goal to find out if the electronic is able to fulfill customers' requirements. Interfaces between modules, its functionality and other characteristics are to be validated. This is to be done in dependency of maturity level. If we have an electronic that works, we should optimize its manufacturing process, testing and service. It means follow in aspect two, with a goal to optimize the FTY parameter under consideration of logistic, availability of components, and complexity of handling. As simple as possible, but not more. Sigma FMAA is a result of many years of experience as a FMAA moderator for automotive industry. My customers, uh, mostly German automotive OEMs and its suppliers, started to use it in 2017. Results was a reduction of developing time up to 20% and reaching of FTY values after a very short period of 99% and better. Our next subject is FIT calculation. Very important point for all today's hardware developer. With one handicap, I'm afraid. The consequences of this handicap is over engineering of the electronics. Why? Because calculation is done mostly for one hypothetic temperature, mostly higher than the real one. Status of the electronic is not really considered and used lambda values are coming from standard uh, documents. Act current uh, values from component manufacturers are not considered. Another point is, if we already have a bad FIT value, nobody knows what to do against. Let us show what is to be done. To fulfill customers' expectation, a special tool, Sigma FIT, was prepared. It is validating the FIT value according to real temperature profile defined by the customer themselves, Storage time, different status of the electronic are also considered. To make it as quick as possible, a direct interface to the bill of material is supported. On demand, a direct integration of results in the ISO 26262 calculation could be supported. As you see, it is very easy to to change the source of lambda values. A default one is a well-known ISN29500. To make understanding of results more easy, 
We are supporting FIT and also additional standardized or own parameter making reliability of the electronic better to understand. So well known is a B10. Additionally, we are calculating also other parameters on demand. As you see on the diagram, it is easy to recognize which module is responsible uh, for the critical FIT value. And in case of optimization, they are to be validated first. SigmaFit calculation tool was introduced in 2016 for calculation of ECUs for German automotive OEMs and its suppliers. It was reaching up to 50% reduction of calculation time and up to 20% cost reduction thanks avoiding of other engineering. The most of you have already got an FMEA coming from our department or from the suppliers. And the main question was, is it good enough? <laughs> Nobody knows it. It's a big handicap of today's way of validation that we do not know really what does it mean. Our results are based on in individual know-how, are strong influenced by the psychological aspects. And at the top of everything, the meaning of good enough is not really defined. In case of validation, and if we believe that it is not good, there are no takeaways to improve it available. Nobody knows what is to be done. Why is it really not good enough? To solve this problem, we've prepared a special tools, easy to use, easy to validate, and giving you an answer concerning conformity with VDA standard and uh, status of implementation of critical as technical aspects. The most important is the easy traceability of the results and using them for future projects. Validation tool is based on a smart checklist, including all relevant VDA aspects and additionally technical aspects of the product. As you see, conformity of each point is to be validated. State of fulfillment can be validated from full green up to red, not fulfilled. Based on metric can show you a result for the whole system or for the sub elements of it or sub aspects of it. On the other diagram, you can see the validation according to phases of, of the process and Yellow points are showing points to be improved. It was 2016 as I was requested by one of German automotive OEMs to support the validation of FMAs coming from uh, his suppliers. That was the birth of our tool. In the meantime, it became a de facto standard for EM gateways. And a very interesting aspect, it was as accepted by the Taiwan suppliers also because it was very easy to follow the decision and the hints to critical points were presented on the very easy way. I would now like to thank Volvo Trucks, Nancy Levison, John Thomas and Stout for permitting the use of their videos, figures and captions and also provided some references for those who are interested in more details. So where can you find more information about our innovative solutions? You could also visit the digital booth where we will be available for one-to-one -one questions, discussions about how to apply this technique in your practical projects or any other questions that you may have. And you can also book a one-to-one -one session with me or Gregor on our website I shown in the link in the slide and we both want to thank you for listening to us today and look forward to see you soon in our next presentation. Thank you and have a good day. Goodbye.